We begin this evening with a major transportation project that could transform how you travel across the city of Buffalo. That's right, this would expand NFTA train service into the northern suburbs, but some neighbors worry it could come at a cost for other communities. You can see this concern. Yeah, this concern here on front lawns along the southern stretch of Niagara Falls Boulevard. You may recognize these no to Metro signs outside numerous homes. They're opposing an NFTA expansion project that would add above ground train service between UB South and North campuses. But there are multiple sides to this issue, and that's why tonight anchor reporter Taylor Epps will introduce you to a variety of perspectives surrounding this expansion project. And we're better to start this story than on board an NFTA train. Taylor. Well, Jeff and Leah, those signs are actually just the tip of the iceberg here. The NFTA has a goal to get more people to do just this, ride this train by expanding it and making it more of a staple in the Western New York community. But some neighbors tell me expanding it would ruin their neighborhoods. So we're getting all around this issue hearing from a variety of voices, talking to people on both sides. First, talking to people who are against the expansion, Mike and Rick, the two men running the Stop the Metro campaign and Phil, a business owner on the boulevard. On the other side, I spoke with James from the Citizens for Regional Transit Group and Jeff from the NFTA, the man running the expansion project. But first, we start with the everyday riders, the people who know this train the best and rely on it. You can save a lot of money, you know, riding the metro. A cheaper way to get from point A to point B in Buffalo. How often do you take this? Uh, every, day. every day. Every day, really. Every day. Two dollars is all it took for Donald Glenn and Victoria McDowell to park and ride downtown for lunch. I stopped to talk to them on their way to Fat Bob's. They tell me it's their go-to way to get downtown. You know when they have live concerts, food truck Tuesday, stuff like that. There are 14 stops from the Outer Harbor up to UB South, but they want more. I'd rather have it go everywhere in Buffalo, you know, why not? There is a plan in the works to take this train further, expanding the light rail all down Niagara Falls Boulevard, up Maple Road, Sweet Home Road, through the UB North Campus, and up to the 990. What do you think about that? Uh, I feel like Buffalo does need a lot of expanding to do. You know, why not? Why not start somewhere, you know, to with an expansion? You know, Buffalo needs a good push, you know, definitely. And we need a Super Bowl, too, you know, so you know and we need <laughs> one of those hurt. as well. Now, while the Buffalo Bills work on that Super Bowl, the NFTA has been working on this expansion since the 1970s with a goal of getting more people to ride the light rail. Now, this is an issue involving a lot of money, impacting a lot of people, and has a lot of opinions around it. So we want to let you know everything you need to know, talking to all sides around this issue. I'm distributing flyers about the metro. Driving up and down the boulevard, you've probably seen these signs. This is Mike Nigrant, the man behind the signs. Usually just roll it up and I stick it in the door. He goes door to door, talking to people about the metro expansion. Uh, we're, we're trying to steer him in the right direction. Which he says is like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. It just wouldn't be the same community for the last 25 years. It's sad. I met up with Mike and his co-organizer, Rick Goldberg, at El Palenque to talk about their concerns. They see four main issues. One, awareness. He says he goes door to door because a lot of people just don't know this is happening. We're trying to inform people. Two, accessibility. This draft rendering from 2019 shows what the expansion would look like near the Boulevard Mall. As a road already busy with traffic, they're concerned about losing lane space. We've talked to a lot of people who provide services for the area, firefighters, garbage collection, police, ambulance, ambulance all of that will be restricted. The NFTA says yes, there could be fewer lanes, but there would be an option to make left-hand turns and U-turns. Number three, the cost, which is estimated at $1.2 billion, but they believe it will cost more. Really, if they do come to fruition, it will really be a nightmare. It will do more harm than good. If they're really serious about improving the city, they would be looking at the rapid bus. That's their alternative proposal, which is like the light rail, but using the road space we already have and dedicating it to more buses. We're supporting them. We want them to have improved transit. Basically expand and improve what we have now instead yes. of building and save, all this. And save the, the taxpayers billions. Let's look at this by the numbers here. Last year, more than 2.4 million people rolled the light rail, up 400,000 riders from the year before. The NFTA's goal is to boost that number, it's a project that would take four to five years to build, with a goal of starting by the end of the decade. And now that brings us to concern number four, the impact all that construction would have on local businesses. Sweeney's has been here on the boulevard since 1948, and the owner tells me expanding here would be a mistake. 
It's just not the best way to go about it. If you think about it, what happened on Main Street when they put the light rail in in the 1970s? It destroyed every business downtown, and until they restored traffic to, not, to Main Street, all those businesses continued to die. Now just, what is it, 40 years later, they're starting to come back because they opened it up to traffic. Why are they trying to repeat the same mistakes they made there? Owner Phil Bozinski tells me if there's construction happening for four to five years, the impact on his business is obvious. We depend on having traffic because we fix cars here. He says he does want people to have more ways to get around Western New York. But this is not the way. I don't think so. I really like the idea of having rapid transit. I think it's great for the community in a sense, but on the other hand, they need to do it in a very smart, responsible way. If they're going to saddle the taxpayers with a long-term maintenance cost of a boondoggle like this, they better damn be sure people are going to use it. We have right here the gold standard of transit. James Gordon with Citizens for Regional Transit is sure people will use it and that more buses is not the way to go, and here's why. Is she going to get the driver to stop? No. Nope. Standing at the University Station stop, James and I watched this young woman miss the bus. The bus is full. That bus will hold 40 people. Train, 140 people. So you can have all the buses you want, and there's nobody around to drive them. He says two groups who are currently underserved would really benefit from the light rail expansion. Car-free people downtown, the students on the campus, and no one is speaking up for those students. Is there, you think, uh, a solution we see coming soon where everyone can be happy? Uh, yes. We know we want it to go. Right. But we want it to go the best way. We certainly don't want it to inconvenience people if it's not necessary. You know, if, if there's a crack somewhere on the line that the whole public says, we don't want this, then we'll go do something else. Jeffrey Ampleman is the conductor of this rail expansion for the NFTA. And while he's ready to shift gears if necessary, he backs this plan. Uh, particularly younger generations don't want to own a car. They want to live close to high quality public transit. So this represents an opportunity to attract those individuals. And I think it'll go a long way to help alleviate some of the issues that are already ongoing throughout that quarter, like traffic and congestion in general. He tells me this will help Buffalo compete with other cities. But Implement says he hears the concerns and is working on the solutions. How do we ensure people have access to their homes, to businesses, and, and, and just making sure that you know life continues as best as it can throughout the construction period. So here's the timeline we're looking at. Environmental reviews will take another year to 18 months. Design work will take another couple years. And the goal is to have shovels in the ground by the end of the decade and have it up and running by early 2030. We've never been closer than we are right now to having this happen, but we got a lot of work to do still. These people have a lot of opportunity to still influence this, and nothing is being shoved down their throats at this point. This project is a community project. It's not the NFTA's project. Well, I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, I'll definitely look forward to that. So if you've got any questions, ideas, or just want to put your two cents in, let's keep the conversation going on my Facebook page. I've got resources for you there and on our website at WKBW.com. From the train, Taylor Epps, 7 News.